one of the benefits of uh, yeah, I guess working in the sector is over time you become friends with people you work with, which really means you can not, you don't have to be nice to it. <laughs> so, thank you, Steve. We stopped that long ago. Yeah, we did. I don't know if we ever started. <coughs> anyway, uh, next I am very pleased to welcome Rachel Gray. Rachel is the director of national initiatives of the National Initiatives Program at EU Initiatives. Yeah. Uh, the National Issues Program supports community agencies working with homeless and at-risk youth in Canada by sharing program materials and experience uh, and by working uh, collaboratively with partners in the sector. Rachel will share with us some promising practice, practices and new partnerships in Canada. Welcome, Rachel. Making housing in the city better—that's the kind of um, 
layered approach that you get that has the kind of impact in our communities for our young people and for housing families. Next stop is Halifax, the you know, formerly Phoenix Youth <coughs> Programs. I believe they are rebranding and they're now just going to be Phoenix. Um, Phoenix is the only organization that gets two slides because there are two programs I got for the word mentioned. And some of you may have heard from in Fabio's uh, presentation yesterday about the Housing Support Workers Program, uh, which I just think is so exciting. It's a provincially uh, funded uh, seven workers, in, uh, one to each of the shelters in the city in Halifax. And they are specifically working with people that uh, were identified as, as being sort of in various tiers of identification, able to move the shelter system quite quickly, able with support to actually live independently. And so they have moved several hundreds of people in the last year out of the shelter system and into housing with supports by, by having, uh, when the new government came in just over a year ago, uh, a very active community ready to go with the post and said, what do you need if you need something right now? Here's what we need. So they have been working together for a long time. And as Abby will tell you, if you have the, the opportunity to listen to her, they not only had a proposal ready to go, but they talked to members of government in a way very, very straightforward. Here's what we need. We need you to give this much money to this program so that we can move these people out of the system. Here's the money we will spend. Here's the money we will save. Make it simple enough so that they can, you know, they can either the deputy minister or the minister can then take that information back to the rest of the caucus and tell that story. I think that's a really important piece as long as your, your, your allies then can relay that information. It makes a huge big difference. Um, also on the housing and homelessness intersection piece, really an important program, a prevention program. There are only a couple of really, really significant um, large established provincial programs in the country. Um, Phoenix is one of them. They did a lot of school-based program um, and interventions for a long time, and then a number of years ago, um, started the Mulberry Park program. Um, there was an organization in, in their community that was closing down and was leaving Mulberry Park, which is a social housing community in Halifax. And for those of you, uh, you know, may know that it, in fact, many of the residents from Africa relocated to Mulberry Park many years ago. So historically significant community in Halifax. Um, they had this opportunity, but another organization was leaving, there was a gap there, and Phoenix, although it was somewhat outside of their mandate, decided that this actually could fit with their idea of prevention. So in the middle of the social housing neighborhood in the community, they have one unit where they work with families all day long. And Ray and I had a chance to go there um, just last year. And in the pouring rain, uh, on the day when it organized, they had a big event, it was their ADM. The, there was a, and, the, and it was closed. So the program was closed, but we were there. Steady stream of people coming in the door. During the day, you get grown ups, you get the adults, the parents, the community who come in, they come in to chat, they come in to have coffee, they come in to cook, they come in to do any number of different things in their engagement programs. Um, and then after school, they go home and wait the other kids arrive. And then after the younger kids get sent home, the older kids arrive. Teenagers arrive, the ones who can't be there earlier in the day when their younger siblings are there, right? So you have to sort of realize that this is a program that is serving the whole community um, with everything from community dinners to drumming to you know computers set up for, for you know basic life skills and other activities, but all day long teaming with activity and the whole community, and you talk about the prevention work, the whole community is engaged in talking to one another about what their young people need, and everybody's engaged in providing that. So I love you. Um, and their numbers continue to grow, so they continue to have more money people using, using the program. Um, Don Ashley, and I will uh, <coughs> say my apologies to my colleagues at Don Ashley, who gave a very detailed explanation of their new housing program, and it and involves some very, very interesting um, funding um, that was so complicated that I couldn't quite discern it. So I will just tell you that after many, many years, Don Ashley has been trying for many years to find a site, and they've been working with the city and different organizations. They now have finally got a site, like it's in Hochelaga in Montreal. This is a partnership with the Y um, and a bunch of other people in the, in the community. So they, in fact, are going to be sharing some space with the Fondation uh, Valverde, the, uh, so it's some kind of a, a, a housing um, community group that works with blind people. Um, so they will be sharing some space. They decided to go with permanent housing as opposed to transitional housing. 
um, and this was after years of sort of researching and trying to figure out what they wanted. Um, there will be 17 weeks of housing, and housing not just for young people, but for young people with families. This, this, is, not, this is what I, I would put on the table and say we hope to be a best practice. Um, it's, it's not open yet. They're hoping to open their doors in, uh, in 2003. I'm going to tell you just a tiny bit more about Vitas because, you know, that's fun too. Uh, Eva's Phoenix was built in 1999. We opened our doors in 2000. Um, shortly thereafter, started talking to people about that process, what that meant. And as a consequence of that enthusiasm and interest in, uh, in the program, we set up the National Initiatives Program so that we could formally do that, share that information with others across the country. Um, the, uh, the process, you know, subsequently included us talking about the Family Reconnect program as well, which Steve has alluded to. And so now there are two of our programs that we focus on providing information about to others in the community sector across the country, both the Phoenix program and the Family Reconnect program. Both of those came about because of uh, you know, an interest from the community sector. In fact, there's several of our colleagues here from, from Calgary, and I remember being out at a summit that the Calgary Homeless Foundation organized a couple of years ago, and at one point went into the washroom on break, having talked about the Family Reconnect program, and two of my colleagues at back, who I won't name, but um, <laughs> they followed me into the washroom and said, we need to talk to you about this program. <laughs> and literally, I was like, back against the wall <laughs> and thought, well, okay, so this actually does need to be something that we figure out a way to talk to people more about. So that, those are the two programs that we focused on, but we've also included, as, as Steve referred to, lots of other learning and information sharing. Um, and just in terms of the impact uh, there, we do a kind of account. We are now up to over 100 units of housing that we uh, know to have been developed because of our connection with organizations <coughs> through the National Issues Program, so across the country. And I, I would suggest as well that some of the impact is in policy work and research work that we're involved with, uh, hoping that that's a good positive impact as well. Um, I uh, did not include, but thankfully Steve can mention, if any of you are looking for a great collaborative model, um, another best practice is in the city of Hamilton where the street youth planning collaborative has different organizations working together at a bunch of different tables and different levels doing profoundly collaborative work where they identify the groups and how can be separate in the planning process. Um, what do we need most? How do we do it? How do we as organizations deliver services together if need be? If I get the funding, you've got the space, we need to do this, can you take up this piece? They're closing shelter beds. They really are doing enormous work there, and I'm sorry that I can't include them here, but for your reference, you can contact them through, through us or through the Social Planning Research Council in Hamilton. Colleagues from Winnipeg are here, although their name tags say Saskatchewan. <laughs> uh, resource Assistance for Youth, uh, or RAE, as it is affectionately known, um, and, uh, and their Emergency Shelter Transition Program, um, which, uh, again, a fabulous best practice that has seen the community in their pay. It has, includes both the public sector, so Manitoba Housing, providing units, and then work with private landlords and RAE, supporting young people to stay housed um, and, uh, and and not just to stay housed but to be more connected with the community and then from your building your allies from within the government in the, uh, uh, you know, it's not <laughs> um, so they have grown this program so in the last year they doubled the number in Manitoba housing and 18 more in the private foundation and um, just very quickly the support both from government and from the, uh, the business sector. Last year, Ray and I were in, uh, in Winnipeg, um, and there was an event that was hosted by the Minister of Housing and the legislature. I have to tell you, it's a pretty stunning thing. I don't know how many of you who work in the sector get to do that, get to be hosted by government in that way, but it really was a sign of how much support there was for this organization and this program, and it was, um, it was really standing out. Okay, Calgary, we're going to go really fast. The Infinity Program, which is the first housing first model for young people, opened, I think, well, 2009 is what I have. I'm hoping that's right. Um, the, uh, again, the reports out of Calgary, not just from the young people who talk about what an impact it is for them to, once housed, be able to then focus on the other things in their lives and move on to other kinds of, of, of work. Um, but the ever impressive number there is why we have to count and know what we're doing. 96% of the young people who have been intaked to that program 
have not been homeless again. When your success rate is almost 100%, I think that's pretty awesome. So, good for them. Where else? We're going to go to Broadway Youth. I'm delighted that Jocelyn's here too. Um, to say the Broadway, Broadway Youth, um, what fabulous organization in Vancouver, um, that five years ago did not do housing work. They had a housing support work that didn't provide housing. They evolved over time largely because of the information sharing and the learning community and different, uh, different services that they got to see and have become kind of a, the support agency of choice in Vancouver. Um, private landlords seek them out, large housing providers seek them out. They have um, now over 100 units of housing that they, where they support young people. And uh, most recently, the uh, Dave Betty was talking about, you know, they have started construction or will start next month, the new home for Broadway Youth, which is going to be within a Vancouver Native housing unit of 100 units. And there will be 30 for young people who will be supported by by what we do. Oh, so partnerships, very quickly. The first significant partnership that I will refer to is one that involves all of you as well. And we will just say, because it has been mentioned, that having everyone in this room and everyone at Congress be part of um, the Youth Homelessness Policy Launch was really significant. It started a couple of years ago when Bruce Pierce said, Can we have a conversation to see whether we can? And a few people got together and then just kept the ball moving. And that's what we have to do for the reason that we talk to the of how two policies like this would make that kind of difference. Prevention. We have recently started a, a prevention program with Aviva Canada, and it's a pretty exciting one for us because we've been working with prevention for a while. It aligns with their Speaks to School program and a national engagement that they are interested in pursuing focused on prevention, basically as a corporate sector <coughs> body would really appeal to them which was they need a lot of financial stuff and for them it was really right. You get young people, you keep them safe, you don't let them get into the shelter system. That makes sense to us. We got that. Okay, we're in. Um, and there was a real logic for them about that. So this is an exciting project that has only recently begun and we're hoping to be able to uh, to connect them with organizations across the country. The land community referred to, we launched in 2006. There are several members, member organizations here in this room. Um, common areas of practice, strengthening our practice, uh, and raising awareness of the homelessness has added to that sense of voice of homelessness. And we've been involved with Art for Four Work, which is a staff exchange program that helps to build our, our staff. There's a couple of people who run a staff exchange right here in St. John's today. We've been involved with Steve and C. Terry at the CHR and on some work on evaluation, which helps to, again, build our sector and our capacity to know how much we're doing that is effective. We've recently, we got some copies of a survey that we did that we're releasing next week on mental health and youth homelessness. Um, mm -hmm. and, uh, and the learning community continues to be a very effective group that brings people together across the country to talk about this issue and to find those common, common areas of interest. And finally, I am very delighted to be able to refer to their most recent um, very bold and, uh, and exciting um, a collaboration and partnership. Maria mentioned that we are um, uh, have just recently gone into an agreement with the Catherine Donnelly Foundation, which is a relatively small foundation in Toronto um, with relatively big dreams. And they have, for many years, been interested in, in uh, how to have more impact in the work that they were doing specifically on housing. And over a, with a relatively short process, actually mapped out with a number of organizations and different people what that process might be and came to the idea that we would end these homelessness in Canada that we would figure out how best to do that by working locally, by bringing a lot of the information sharing that we've been talking about today to individual communities and saying, okay, what do you need in your job? What's your, like, what, how many different services? What are your top priorities? And if that's what you need in this job, who do we know close by or across the country who's done that kind of employment pro pro program? or who's done effective work on mental health, who might be able to help you build transitional housing, or can tell you about the partnerships with landlords that are really going to make a difference. How do we bring that expertise to bear in one community at time and figure out whether that's a model that really works for preventing or ending homelessness in um, one community at a time, while also continuing to do the work like the policy work that we're doing here at CHRA to say, this has to be something to respond to strategically. It has to be that we actually have a better approach um, and we need to raise awareness and actually move that forward collaboratively, a bunch of different organizations at a time, making that happen. So, um, we have a little bit of information as well on the Catherine Donnelly Foundation program. 
which is um, uh, awkwardly called the Mobilizing Local Capacity to End <coughs> Homelessness. The first order of business of contest, I think, to get a better name and yeah. more involved uh, in that as well. Um, so the moral of the story, very quickly, that uh, of the things that I've talked to you about today, all of those best practices, and there are many others in the country, but those folks many times over learn from each other and share from each other as organizations, and that's reflected in the programs that we deliver. We have helped each other, we have mentored each other, and our programs show that. The Learning Community Members are as part of this Catherine Donnelly Foundation program, and we'll be sharing that knowledge with other communities as well. The Learning Community Members have been part of the CHRN project. Um, the Learning Community isn't the only model, it just means that collaboration works, and we know that, and we want to continue to do that. Um, so that we're not just responding effectively at a program level, but that we're actually trying to, um, and, and we are effective at making the kind of system changes. So one program at a time is going to be great, but broader, you know, broader system approaches is actually going to work a whole lot better, and we have more chance of doing that if we're doing the same work across the country and, and raising awareness in the same way. Okay? We're good. The ability of this piece of paper to tell us stress and panic and to make people talk to me. <laughs> um, thank you for that, Rachel. Um, one of the things I will say uh, for our, our, our next uh, speakers are, are ready is it connects back to the, con the conversation I mentioned uh, yesterday with Maria a few years ago. We actually do know what the solutions are. That a number of years ago was about, well, we don't know this, we don't know that. Yeah, actually, we do. And there are these examples, and many others across this country would say, yeah, it's not about we don't know anymore. The complex issue then is how to go about implementing these things broadly across the country to do work. Um, as much as that means there's still a lot of work to do, it's a much healthier place, uh, I think, 